I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. I commend you for the things that you do on a weekly basis. You and your kids might have loved Monday Night Raw tonight. Well, I'm going to say this. I don't give a shit about your kids. You can do one of two things. Number one, you can click the fucking video off and get the fuck off my channel. Number two, you can sit there, shut your fucking mouth, and listen to this Monday Night Raw review like you're going to do each and every fucking week. Let's talk about it. Where, where do I even fucking start with this show, man? I, I really I really don't even know anymore. What, what do I gotta do? What do I gotta do when I come on here? I know there'll be I know there'll be a legion of fucking goons in the comment section. Oh, oh JD! Oh JD! Monday Night Raw was so great, man! I'm wait I'm waiting for it. I'm fucking waiting for it. I'm speechless. I am speechless at how stupid WWE can be. Right out of the gate, as soon as the show went off the air, the first thing in my mind, after everything that we've seen tonight, is that WWE does not give a flying fuck about the build for SummerSlam. They don't. They don't. Storylines and progression are 50% of the battle. Now, I understand that going into SummerSlam, with the matches that you look up and down and you see on paper, more than likely this is going to be a great show. You got Balor and Rollins... Pretty much going to steal the show. You got Ambrose and Ziggler. Going to be a great match. Randy Orton and Brock Lesnar. Going to be a great match. Must see marquee match. John Cena versus AJ Styles. Going to be another great match. Right? Kevin Owens and Jericho versus Cass and Enzo. Going to be a great match. Sasha Banks and Charlotte. Going to be a great match. Right? Going into this We Know SummerSlam is going to be a great pay-per-view. But that should not give the WWE the reason to be lazy. What happened to storyline progression? I don't know. Seems like WWE went into this build for SummerSlam just hoping that it's going to do well based on the talent alone that they have booked for the show. That's fine. That's fine. But what about the four fucking weeks of television that you bored us to fucking tears? Minus that one Monday Night Raw of the new era that began or kicked off the new era where Balor made everybody salty. I understand, but week after week after week for the last three weeks, WWE clearly does not give a flying fuck. Lazy, uncreative, as if SummerSlam meant nothing to WWE. Whoever was in charge of booking this show tonight, I don't know who the fuck you are, what you were smoking, what you were drinking. You should not be in charge of producing a wrestling program for WWE. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. I don't give a fuck who I make salty. I don't give a fuck about who enjoyed the show. Tonight's show from Corpses Christie, Texas. And I'm stealing that one from fucking Solomon because it's hilarious. I don't know whether I was watching fucking dead bodies in the crowd or actual human beings. How can mankind and The Rock, during the halftime of whatever Super Bowl they were fucking fighting in an empty arena, have more reaction and more live atmosphere with two people and empty seats than a three-hour Monday Night Raw in Corpus Christi, Texas? 
I don't know. It's beyond my realm of fucking thought possibilities. Seriously. The physics are not there. This show fucking sucked. Absolutely fucking sucked. WWE, clear as day, went into this without a goddamn fucking plan. Lazy, uncreative, don't give a fuck about what's happening on the road to SummerSlam. Just let me get through SummerSlam and then get on to whatever else they fucking got for us in 2006. They, they took what they did with WrestleMania and did it again with SummerSlam. The build was awful for WrestleMania and the build was awful for SummerSlam. Minus that one Monday Night Raw in which Finn Balor made everybody salty. And speaking of that, speaking of that, Let's address the elephant in the room right out of the fucking gate because that's what, that's what everybody's fucking talking about right now is the demon king, Finn Balor. I posted on Twitter that this entire demon king and addressing the demon king and having the demon king appear on Monday Night Raw, which I thought was a fucking mistake right from the get-go, I tweet and... Instantly, WWE makes the Demon King appear. Now, I posted on Twitter, if you guys are following me, at JD from NY206, if you guys want to get fucking benched, like most fucking goons this evening. I posted on Twitter, an analogy of American Pie. You guys ever watched that movie, American Pie? Where Jim, right? Jim is in his bedroom, and he doesn't know that his webcam is on. Now you got a beautiful fucking Russian, Nadia, in your bed wearing no clothing. Okay. So let's pretend WWE is Jim, and Nadia is Finn Balor. Okay? I know that might be a little difficult, but... Stick with me. So, WWE, a.k.a. Jim, gets into bed with Nadia. And Finn Balor, Nadia, is dressed up as the Demon King. Okay? Again, stick with me. I know Nadia is hot, but nobody wants to see her dressed as the Demon King. But WWE gets into bed with Nadia, right? And pretty much fucking masturbates... Comes in three seconds, and everything is fucking, like Matt Hardy said, over! Gene was deleted. That's what WWE did tonight. But Gene did it twice. He did it twice. WWE, all they did it was one time. They were fucking impatient. I don't understand it, and don't tell me... I don't want to hear the fucking excuse that, oh, well, 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 the WWE needed to bring out the demon to appease the casuals because they don't know what he looks like. They don't know anything about Finn Balor's alternate persona. Give me a fucking break. We live in a world of fucking internet and social media. All you have to do is go on YouTube and type in Finn Balor Demon King. You don't need to pay $9.99 for YouTube, you fucking clown. How difficult and lazy can it be? How, how, how difficult can it be? How lazy can you be to research the Demon King? It's not that difficult. Mere seconds on a keyboard. You don't need to watch NXT every week. You don't need to fucking watch everything he did for the last two years in NXT. Debuting the Demon King was a complete fucking waste in front of fucking Corpus Christi, Texas. Corpses Christi, Texas. Out of your fucking mind. Stupidity by the WWE. I don't get it. I don't get it. Joe... Joe Cronin, my good friend Joe Cronin, is using the Jaws reference, right? What happened in the first Jaws movie. You didn't see the fucking goddamn shark up until the end of the goddamn fucking movie. And that's my favorite movie ever. You've seen fucking shadowy glimpses of him on the water. You've seen the fucking fin. 
He got fucking Flint throwing the fucking barrels in the water, and you see the fucking barrels flying all over the place in the water. Never once did you see the fucking shark. One time you seen it until it was fucking shot dead at the end of the movie. Or twice. One where he came up, and the fucking, you know, they, they were dumping the blood in the water, and he comes up, and then at the end where fucking Flint is pretty much eaten alive. And then he gets his head blown off as the orca went down into the fucking Atlantic Ocean. You guys get my point. Throughout the entire movie, everybody was wondering, where's the shark? Where's the shark? What does it look like? What does it look like? The anticipation built and built and built. And when you finally seen this fucking thing and the fucking monster that they were, that they were chasing and trying to hunt down for three hours of a fucking movie, you felt good at the end. Your anticipation levels were there. Your intrigue was there. Your interest was at an all-time high in that movie when you watched it for the first time. And then when they blew that motherfucker sky high, that's it. The day is saved. I'm going to use the Jurassic Park an uh, uh, analogy. What happened to that? Half of that fucking movie, what happened? Chaos is fucking flying all over the place in Jurassic Park, right? Lights going out, telephones going out, fucking hurricanes sweeping over the island, right? None of the gates have electricity. What the fuck does that mean? Uh-oh. Your anticipation is there. Because in the back of your mind, you know the fucking T-Rex is fucking floating around that island somewhere. All of a sudden, the cops, or not the cops, I don't know why the fuck I got cops on my mind. The fucking, uh, the, the jeeps which are run on electric fucking cables. Stop, coincidentally, right in front of the fucking T-Rex paddock, right? All you see is fucking children rustling around in the fucking back of the Jeep, right? Like a bunch of fucking goons, they pull out the light, start fucking flailing the light around, right? Next thing you know, they got a fucking goat body slamming on top of the fucking roof of their car. All of a sudden, you've seen the wires of the, of the T-Rex paddock Fucking being blown to smithereens. And then all of a sudden, more than halfway through the fucking movie, you see this thing appear for the first fucking time. And all you can do is just look. You got a whole bucket of fucking buttery popcorn sitting next to you. You didn't touch that fucking popcorn once during that fucking scene. Not once. Because you knew for a fact that when this thing came out, your attention was going nowhere else until this thing was causing carnage and death and destruction in that entire fucking scene. And that's exactly what it did. That's exactly what it did. Until fucking Dr. Grant took a flare and threw it, and he tried to save the fucking day. And then after that, the story progressed and progressed and progressed. You guys get my fucking point? The anticipation for Finn Balor is gone. It is gone. And the fact that they actually had a brawl in the middle of the ring even adds to the stupidity of WWE. Why? Why? I am going to tell you right here and now, if you're going to appease the casuals because they are too fucking lazy to go out and find Finn Balor footage on their own, Everybody's on fucking social media. All you gotta do is type in Finn Balor on Twitter, Demon King, and I'm sure something will fucking pop up. No, they needed to give it away in front of the worst fucking crowd possible that don't deserve a goddamn fucking thing. And now, what are they gonna do for SummerSlam? Unless they're gonna fucking blow shit out of the water at SummerSlam. Unless the Statue of Liberty is gonna fucking come to life and walk with Finn Balor down the aisle as he makes his fucking entrance. They cannot top what the Demon King did tonight. Because you've seen him crawling, and you've seen the dreadlocks, and you've seen the fucking face paint, and you've seen that huge eye that was painted on his back. It's over. The anticipation is over. Why? Why would you do such a stupid thing? For the sake of selling a few pay-per-views to a few people that don't have the network? Give me a fucking break. You should have all the fucking access in the world to go and research this shit yourself. You don't need the fucking network to know who Finn Balor is. Everybody knows who Finn Balor is. Finn Balor's on the main roster, right? He's automatically booked in the WWE 
Universal Championship match at SummerSlam. What are they going to do now? Anticipation is ruined. That shark moment in Jaws is ruined. Because they showed the shark 10 minutes into the fucking film. That T-Rex moment is fucking ruined. Because they showed the T-Rex because he's the most popular fucking thing out of all the dinosaurs in that park 20 minutes into the film. Who gives a shit after that? Who gives a shit after that now? The anticipation, the intrigue, the reaction is gone. Now, New York is going to save the reaction, but you just wasted this on Corpus Christi, Texas. And I don't want to hear the excuse of you needed to sell the pay-per-view. You needed to unleash that alternate persona of Finn Balor to the people who did not know who he was. Bullshit. Bullshit. Something so special, something so unique needs to be saved for the biggest pay-per-view that you're putting on outside of WrestleMania. And coincidentally, he's debuting at SummerSlam. Should have been saved for then. If you don't understand where I'm coming from, and you don't understand the logic that I'm speaking right now, you should not be watching me or the WWE product. Because that makes you just as worse as everybody else who's using the fucking excuse, oh, we needed to do this to show him off to the casuals. Fuck that. Fuck that. Another thing that fucking pissed me off is the fact that WWE, again, because they are too fucking impatient, and going back to the Jeem and Nadia reference, again, came in three seconds. Because they were too fucking impatient. Why book a WWE United States Championship match? Why have Roman Reigns and Rusev go out there and give us the match that they gave us tonight, six days before pay-per-view? Why? Can you please honestly tell me what these two are going to do to top what they did tonight on Monday Night Raw, I don't think it can be done. If it is done, I will say that I'm wrong on my SummerSlam review. But I doubt those two are going to have a better match than what we've seen tonight. They literally put everything they had into that match. Superman punches, spears, accolades, Roman Reigns in the accolade for a minute and a half, crawling to the ropes, Wins, gets up as if he wasn't even in the fucking accolade. Wins with one spear. One, two, three. The only light at the end of the tunnel that I see here is that Roman Reigns got his win tonight and won't be getting it at SummerSlam. Because Rusev is the United States champion. He let his wife down because apparently they fought for his wife's honor, for Lana's honor, and that was it. Why give away one of your marquee matches a championship match on Monday Night Raw six days before a pay-per-view. It takes all the intrigue out of watching these two go at it at the pay-per-view. Can you please explain to me, being that this fucking storyline is built off nothing but Roman Reigns' corny jokes and the fact that Lana is Rusev's wife and he is upset at the disrespect that she has been given. I understand that, that portion of it. That's okay. That's passable. But Roman Reigns cracking Russian uh, maids and fucking mail order brides or whatever the fuck this guy's talking about. That's his side of the story that's being told here. Shitty jokes. Can you honestly explain to me, after what these guys did tonight, why would anybody fucking care about what they do at SummerSlam? Why? Why? We got SummerSlam for free tonight. So if you're looking forward to this match, there's no reason for you to watch SummerSlam. Because what you got tonight was exactly what they're going to do at SummerSlam. Pointless. Impatient. And again, WWE, in typical WWE logic, fucked up. And if you don't like what I'm saying, if you think I am wrong, you're a fucking goon. Seriously. No reason why a championship match should be given away on Monday Night Raw. Six days before a pay-per-view. Now, I'll have some fucking idiot in the comments say, Oh, well, JD, Sasha Banks and Charlotte, they, they fought before the pay-per-view, man. Yeah, but that was a different scenario. You see, WWE needed a Monday Night Raw that was going to blow the roof off of what they've been doing. They figured a title change would accelerate that for Monday Night Raw. So that I understand. Even though I was against it and I didn't like it, I understood why they did it. You got Balor. You got Banks winning the title. Okay, I can live with it. Because what Sasha and Charlotte did, I know for a fact, they can go into SummerSlam 
and give us another great match, if not better. So I'm not concerned about that. I am concerned about giving away a United States Championship match for fucking 24 minutes on Monday Night Raw in the main event, six days before pay-per-view. Why am I going to give a fuck about what these two guys do in Brooklyn? I'm not. And right now, I couldn't give two fucks. Simple as that. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Other than that, what else is there to talk about Monday Night Raw? Oh, Brock Lesnar. Paul Heyman, Lesnar, they can sell fucking... They can sell ice to an Eskimo, I said, on Off the Script, right? That's exactly what those two guys can do. Lesnar even got on the microphone tonight when Heath Slater foolishly came down the aisle. He said, listen, I need to do this for my kids. I need this. I want this. This is my only shot to get a contract with Monday Night Raw. Paul Hammond's telling him, don't get in the ring. Don't get in the ring. You're making a mistake. Save your life. Go the opposite way, please, before you get hurt. He Slater slowly, slowly, slowly makes his way to the ring. Leans over the ropes. Lesnar takes the fucking microphone from Paul Heyman. And actually starts out being a nice guy. No, well, you got some kids, right? Yeah. I got kids too. I commend you, man. I appreciate the fact, and I respect the fact, that you're here and you got balls. You're doing what you're doing. For your kids. And then Lesnar says, yeah, come into the ring. Come into the ring. Gets in his face. I don't give a shit about your kids. You can either do two things. And what the fuck did he say? Because it was fucking hilarious. It's in my notes. I don't know exactly what he said. He said that you can walk out of here on your own two feet or stand there and keep ticking me off. That's exactly what Brock Lesnar said. Well, he eats later like a fucking asshole, tries to fight, and he gets suplexed into oblivion. And that was that. Now, I, I didn't like this segment at all when Heath Slater first came out, but as soon as Brock Lesnar said, I don't give a shit about your kids, that was the line of the year that made me fucking laugh out loud hysterically to the point where the whole fucking neighborhood heard me, and I said, you know what, I'm going to retract my tweet on Twitter because when Heath Slater came out, this was fucking pointless. It was a waste of fucking paper in which this storyline and, and segment was written on. And then Lesnar opens his fucking mouth unannounced to everybody and says what he says because he's fucking Brock Lesnar and he makes everybody laugh and it's fucking great and I retracted my statement that statement and that statement alone made this segment probably the best on Monday Night Raw and Paul Heyman sold this match Paul Heyman sold this match and I don't know if you guys were watching Brock Lesnar and the way he was looking into the camera which I appreciate when a wrestler looks into the fucking camera you're looking at me man you're looking at Randy Orton who I know is watching he looked intimidating more so than I've ever seen Brock Lesnar. He looked fucking legit fucking tough. He looked intimidating as fuck tonight. And I loved it, man. Lesnar, Orton, going to be a great match. One of you guys on Twitter reached out to me and said, you know what, JD, you might be right. I do not see Lesnar losing to Randy Orton, which I still do not think Lesnar is going to lose. It would be an absolutely colossal error on WWE's part. And I didn't think of this. I got The Undertaker uh, and The Shriek in the back of my mind, which is all the fucking, which is all the information you need about why Lesnar should not lose. Give me a break for the fucking idiots that think, oh, well, Orton's got to win. or oh, Lesnar's got to be punished. Lesnar's bad for the business. The fuck are you talking about Lesnar's bad for the fucking business? Lesnar's making WWE money. How the fuck is he bad for business? You fucking kidding me? This is the stupidity I gotta do. Lesnar is bad for business, is what I am being told. Uh, well, yeah, let me call up Dana White. Yeah, Dana, is, is, is Brock Lesnar bad for business? He'll fucking laugh at you. Hey, Vince, is Brock Lesnar bad for business? He'll fucking laugh at you. Are you fucking out of your mind? Lesnar's bad for business. You know how much fucking t-shirts he sold with a fucking slogan that says Suplex City? Jesus, Isaac. Isaac Rojas made me a fucking t-shirt. Imitating that. That's all over the fucking place. Suplex City. Lesnar's bad for business, though, right? You know how much fucking money Lesnar is making? You think if WWE could not make that money back 
plus some? Why would they be signing Brock Lesnar to $6 million a year? Of course he's making them business. <laughs> fucking stupid. Out of your fucking mind. I don't even know what to say to that. Lesnar's bad for business. Give me a break. Lesnar's good for business. If he's making McMahon money, he's good for business. Gives a fuck. Works a part-time schedule. Can you do what Lesnar does? Oh, JD, he takes steroids, man. Can you do what he does? No. You can't. Can you entertain better than Lesnar? No. You can't. Can you sell a match like Heyman and Lesnar together? No, you can't. So who's better for business, you or Lesnar? What's better for business for WWE, Lesnar there or Lesnar not there? Oh, well, JD, oh, J what about the other guys you deserve it, man? None of them, none of them are Brock Lesnar. None of them will ever be Brock Lesnar. I don't give a fuck if you're on the road 500 days a year. You're not Brock Lesnar. You can fucking wrestle all across the United States. 500 days a year for both Raw and SmackDown. If you're not one-tenth of the iota of an athlete that Brock Lesnar is, who gives a shit? You're not Brock Lesnar. That's all that matters. That was the best segment on Monday Night Raw. Other than that, I mean, what, what did we have here tonight? I, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn versus Sheamus. This match went 10 minutes. Sami Zayn wins with a halluva kick. And the reason why he won is because Cesaro got involved. And Sami Zayn, I mean, I would love for him to beat Sheamus on his own. But, Sam, uh, but you know, Sami Zayn needed Cesaro's help. After the match here, should be, uh, you know, this is another thing that WWE did. After the match, Mick Foley, Mick Foley books Sheamus and Cesaro in a match at SummerSlam. Okay. Match of SummerSlam. But instead of it being the third and final time, he books it in a best of seven series. Like we wanted to see it the first two fucking times. Now we're forced to see it seven more times? I mean, this isn't Chris Benoit and Booker T. I was entertained by that at least. I love Cesaro. But. Can they go seven times and make each match different? I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'm willing to give them a shot. I didn't want to see it the first two times, but if I got to sit down and listen to fucking seven more matches being called between Sheamus and Cesaro on Monday Night Raw, I don't know, man. I don't know. I think that's going to fucking blow up in WWE's face. Sami Zayn gets the win. Still does not have a SummerSlam match. Fucking miserable decision by WWE. Dudley Boys versus New Day. One minute and 38 seconds. Dudley Boys lose. Yeah. Greatest tag team of all time. Lose in one minute and 38 seconds. Because of a miscue by Devon, who clotheslines Bubba Ray out of the ring. And then he gets a trouble in paradise for his troubles. And the New Day beat the Dudley Boys. And I, I, I'm, I, I feel Bully Ray is coming any week now. I think the WWE is really going to break up the Dullies. That doesn't, that doesn't mean well for Devon at all. It's great for, for Bully Ray, for Bubba Ray. But Devon, right down the fucking toilet. Post-match here, we got Gallows and Anderson again microwaving eggs. As if they're Big E's testicles. And they got two empty jars with the names of Kofi and Xavier on it. So, this feud is built off... Ring postitis and Dr. Gallows and Anderson microwaving eggs. Awesome. This is all for the tag team titles, by the way, clowns. Awesome. Nia Jax versus Rachel Weeby. Whatever the case may be. She got the fucking tattoos knocked off of her. Fireman's carry into a power slam at one minute and five seconds. This is going to get old very fast. I want competition for Nia Jax. Seriously. A couple more weeks of this, I'll be fine. But if you're going to continue this, after SummerSlam, that's got to be it. you got to give Nia Jax some competition. I think everybody gets the fucking point now. She's fucking powerful. 
okay? She can, she can destroy a woman inside the ring. Give me some legit competition for Nia Jax, hopefully after SummerSlam. Big Cass versus Kevin Owens. Big Cass beat Enzo. Uh, I don't know what the fuck. Be Big Cass beat Enzo, it says in, in my notes here. No, 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 no. Somebody made a fucking typo. Big Cass beat Kevin Owens via DQ when Chris Jericho interfered. And uh, it was pretty much nothing here. I mean, Jericho was fucking around with Enzo on the outside. And then he eventually sneak attacks Big Cass on the outside. And they get the upper hand going into SummerSlam, which only means that Big Cass and Enzo are going to come out on top in Brooklyn, which should be of no surprise to anybody. I would not be, oh, I would not mind if Jericho and Kevin Owens stayed as a tag team and went for the tag team titles. I would be okay with that. I think they're fucking great together. Jericho is just fucking great at what he's doing, man. I love this gimmick, you know? This, this over-eccentric out there, rock star gimmick he's got with the scarf and the fucking beard. I think it's great. Calling everybody stupid idiots and, and just whatever the fuck he's doing, man. It's working. It's working with Kevin Owens, too. I think they could be a great tag team. Fight for the tag team titles. Let's do it, man. You know? Let's do it. Speaking of tag teams, WWE trolled us all. Primetime players come out. And I'm like, all right. Finally, a right decision. For the WWE here. They finally made a right decision. Darren Young is awful on his own. He was never going to get over at all. He was going to be a waste of fucking roster space as a singles guy. Titus O'Neil was the same way. A waste of fucking roster space. How can we utilize these guys and get the most out of both of them while making both of them look good? Put them back as a tag team. There you go. What happens during the match? I tweet, this is the best decision for these guys. Adds another team. It would alleviate the pain of breaking up the Dudleys. Everything seemed to make sense, right? If you're going to break up the Dudleys, you got another team reunited in the primetime players, so you're not really going to lose a tag team. You can, you can really sacrifice the Dudleys and get Bully Ray into the mid-card main event, and you got the primetime players back. You build them up as a solid face tag team. Now, what did WWE do here? Fucking Titus O'Neil turns on Darren Young mid-match and delivers the Clash of the Titus to his own partner, and the Shining Stars are fucking celebrating as if they won the fucking tag team titles. Because they did literally nothing to beat the primetime players. In fact, the primetime players beat the primetime players. It wasn't even the Shining Stars. So there you go. Shining Stars continue to look like losers, and the primetime players were broken up again. What the fuck is going on behind the scenes in WW? Who the fucks... Who scripts this garbage? What a fucking, what a idiotic decision. I don't get it. Yeah, let me keep them, let me keep them single and have them go nowhere instead of putting them together and actually have making, instead of making use out of them. Doesn't make sense to me. Jinder Mahal versus Neville. This match went three minutes. Red Arrow, red arrow to Jinder Mahal. Uh, what am I going to, what am I going to say about this? Jinder Mahal was brought in as an enhancement talent. This was reported before he even made his re-debut on Monday Night Raw. And this is exactly what he did in this match. He was an enhancement talent. He got Neville over, took the pinfall, one, two, three, red arrow, and there you go. You well, know, there you go. Neville. Golden Truth versus Gallows and Anderson. Match went two minutes and 18 seconds. Magic killer to gold dust. Post-match, New Day comes out for the beatdown. Gallows saved Anderson from a huge blow to the crotch with Francesca 2, the trombone. So, Gallows saved Anderson from impending doom. That was pretty much that. Alicia Fox versus Charlotte. One minute and 25 seconds. Natural selection. And yes, clowns. I know. Sasha Banks pants with a fucking highlight of Monday Night Raw. There, I said it for you. Roman Reigns versus Rusev, we talked about that. That was the main event, and that's all I got, man. Now listen, I, I, I hope I made sense in this review. I really did. You guys got to see where I'm coming from. I don't sit here and sweat my fucking balls off for no reason in the fucking midst of the dog days of summer and just spew bullshit just for the fact that you know, it is what it is. I got to put something out there for you guys. I, I, I think and I dissect and I plan out for the three hours of the show. And then I come on here in front of this microphone and I give you guys a fucking review that you're going to remember and that you're going to talk about 
and that you're going to enjoy all week. I make sense. I talk sense. I don't come on here and spew negativity for the sake of spewing negativity. Okay? I come on here and give you guys cold, hard facts and truth. And you might not be thinking what I'm thinking, but I'm here to let you know what I am thinking. And then you're watching me and be like, you know what? JD makes sense. JD makes sense tonight. I agree. That's all I do, man. That's all I can hope. If I can change one person, if I can alter one person's decision about what they viewed tonight, I find the review a success. Because like I said, I know there'll be fucking clowns in the comment section. Oh, Raw was great. Raw was great. No, it wasn't. It was lazy, uncreative, and WWE showed you the fact that they don't give a flying fuck about SummerSlam because what they got booked for SummerSlam is going to sell itself in the ring. Storylines to them meant nothing. And they knew that and they knew they could get away with it. But we're the ones who got to suffer through three hours of fucking Monday Night Raw. Garbage. Please, I'm going to start making t-shirts with a fucking list of cities on the back of the shirt with a fucking huge red line going right through the city. Corpus Christi would be at the top of the fucking list. Give me a break. If I was in charge, Raw would be in Miami, Chicago, Philadelphia, New York, Los Angeles, Dallas. All those cities, man. St. Louis, maybe. Hit or miss with St. Louis. Las Vegas. All those big cities. All these other fucking small town cities and these fucking cities where you got the mothers and fathers and the kids going there and they don't know what the fuck they're watching. Please, save those cities for the fucking house shows. If you gotta repeat the cities all over again throughout the year for Monday Night Raw 52 times, I would not mind Monday Night Raw coming back to New York City eight times a year. And then eight times in Miami, eight times in Philly, eight times in Los Angeles, Vegas. Why do we have to sit through terrible fucking Raws in terrible cities, man? Jesus fucking Christ. Go grill your burgers and your fucking ribs. Go ask JR for barbecue sauce. If, that's all on, if that is all on your mind, don't go to the fucking show. Please. I don't want you there. Because you ruin it for me and you ruin it for everybody else. Fuck out of here. That's your goddamn fucking review. If you guys enjoyed it, let me know down below. If you hate me, if you love me, sound off. Comments, comment section's yours. But if you get disrespectful and rowdy, I gotta bench you. That's all there is to that. Anyway, I'll be back, man. I got some great shit planned for you guys. If you missed my King of the Ring match between Styles and... Who the fuck was it, man? I don't even know the fucking matches that I put on. This is, this is me getting so heated for Monday Night Raw, I don't even know what I did. I got, oh yeah, Styles and Balor. Styles and Balor, King, uh, King of the Ring. Road to WW2K17, King of the Ring. Balor and Styles, round two semifinals. Wait till you see the fucking match I got for you tomorrow, man. Seth Rollins versus Sami Zayn. You thought Dean Ambrose versus Sami Zayn was something. Wait till you see this one. Holy shit. The best match you will see on this website when it comes to WWE games, man. Unbelievable. I also posted a video about have I abandoned you? from the Call of Duty community. If you guys want to go check that out, that's live on my channel right now. I also got a video coming up later this week. I got my top five finishers of the new era in WWE. NXT review, tomorrow night SmackDown review, Cruiserweight Classic. We got NXT preview and predictions, SummerSlam preview and predictions. I got SummerSlam simulations for WW2K16. So much shit coming up this week. I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do with myself, man. I'll be living in front of my computer, all for you guys, hope you enjoy it, hit that thumbs up, thank you for watching Monday Night Raw Review, and I will see you guys tomorrow night for Smackdown Live, Cena, Del Rio, and then Ziggler and Ambrose are on Miz TV, Jesus fucking Christ, if it's anything like fucking Corpses Christi, Texas, we're gonna be in for a long two hours of Smackdown, but until then guys, I'm JD, follow me on Twitter, at JD from NY206, Pledge to the Patreon, patreon.com slash JD from NY206, and subscribe to the fucking channel if you have not done so already. I'll see you guys for SmackDown Live. Talk to you later.